Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, my name is Cordant and we are back for some more Solasta The Lost Valley DLC. In the previous episode we had escaped the Redeemer Lair and we fought some gorillas in this area. Uh, as you can see it was not particularly an easy fight, uh, but we managed, we leveled up and in between episodes I actually swapped the game from my HDD to my SSD. I thought it was in the SSD, but it was not. And hopefully that will help out with the loading times. And I also uh, considered my level ups so as to not waste a lot more time here. So, for the start, we are going to have a long rest and do our character level ups. So, for Conan, our barbarian, he is now at 48 HP, pretty cool, gets an additional rage use, and we get to choose a path that shapes the nature of our rage. In this case, we have a couple of them. The new one from the Lost Valley DLC is the Path of the Claw, and this pretty much means you have a dragon ancestry. Although, it doesn't really seem very appealing to me, <laughs> it doesn't really do much, you get to choose a dragon and while raging you get a bonus to 1 AC and resistance to the damage type of your Draconic Ancestor. So, kinda specific. Then you can also breathe a, a cone of elemental damage equal to half your level in D8. Again, nothing particularly exciting. And at level 10, while raging our melee weapon deals an additional 1d8 elemental damage. Not really very interested in that. Path of the Mage Bane, this is something that already existed with the Primal Calling DLC, I think that's the name. And this one just means you're kind of like an anti-mage character. You get additional attack roll, um, you get better attack rolls against people able to cast magic. And you have advantage on saving throws against spells. It's actually pretty good. It is pretty good. But it's not very exciting. Path of the Berserker. Uh, you can go into a frenzy when you rage. And if you do so, for the duration of your rage, you can make a single melee weapon attack as a bonus action on each of your turns after this one. So, this is actually very good. When your rage ends, you suffer one level of exhaustion unless you make a successful DC 10 con saving throw. Should be kinda easy. Um, this is the part I don't understand though. The DC increases by 5 each time you complete a short or long rest. Does this mean it stacks? Because if it does stack, uh, you won't be able to save against this after a couple of rests. But maybe I'm just reading into this wrong. Uh, the higher level abilities are just kind of whatever. You can't be charmed or frightened while raging. Sure. And you can frighten a creature until the end of your next turn if it fails a wisdom check opposed by your charisma. Not very relevant for us. So I'm actually gonna go for the Path of the Stone. Which seems to be the best one for the, the kind of lineup we have. Because my Barbarian is going to be our only frontliner. And he's going to be soaking up damage most of the time. And what this does is, while raging, you gain temporary HP equal to twice your proficiency bonus at the end of your turn. So it, it kind of acts like healing. At higher levels, our constitution saving throw is used for any saving throw, if it's higher than the one normally used. Pretty cool. Not very relevant for the reflex, but still cool. And at level 10 we have Rock Solid. Uh, while raging we get one additional AC per hostile opponent that you can see within one cell of you. Up to a maximum of plus 4. So the more surrounded I am, the tankier I will be. So this is the one we're going to take. And that, that's the level up for Mr. Conan here. Tree Hugger, our Druid. Uh, level 3, 39 hit points. And now we get to choose Circle Spells. We get to select a terrain type that grants a range of spells that are always pre uh, treated as prepared. Forest, grassland, mountain, swamp, desert, coast or arctic. And here we can see what kind of spells we have. Now I'm not going to bore you with all the stuff you can get. I'm just 
you know, browsing through so you can see if you want to pause or something. But I think the best one for me is the grassland. It gives us invisibility and pass without trace. Not really the more important thing here, honestly. Uh, you get daylight, which was a big deal in the first game. Not sure how much we're going to be playing with darkness here, but this is a good spell to have. Haste, also a very good spell to have. Greater invisibility and freedom of movement, pretty good. Mind Twist, I don't remember what it does, but Insect Plague, also a very good spell. So we will take these, and now we get to prepare our spells. So now we have seven spells to take with us, and we have to uh, divide them between level one and level two. So naturally, I'm gonna want level two spells. So I am going to remove Long Strider and Thunder Wave here. Possibly I'll also remove Fog Cloud, but I do like the combination of Fog Cloud and Entangle. Uh, you entangle a bunch of people, they cannot move, and then you cast a Fog Cloud on top of them, and they cannot even attack those on the outside. So it sounds good in theory, let's see if it actually does something. As for level 2, these are the spells we have available. Uh, I'm kind of curious about this Moonbeam. It causes Radiant damage. It deals 2d10. It supposedly lasts for one minute. So I'm kind of guessing it's concent yeah, it's concentration. It summons a uh, Moonbeam for you to control. Okay. There's a lot of save for half over there. <laughs> I'm not sure why so many saves. Uh, but this one kind of sounds interesting. Spike growth also sounds kind of cool. You're going to slow everybody down and they take 2d4 damage, I believe, for every cell of movement that they make. So this can add up pretty nicely. I also like hold person naturally. This is an awesome, awesome spell. And there's also heat metal. And this one deals 2d8 fire damage. And it gives disadvantages to attack rolls and ability checks. And they can still receive additional fire damage. Uh, but this only works if the enemy is wearing a metallic piece of armor. If, it, if he doesn't, it's gonna not do anything. It's also a concentration spell, which is something I'm kind of noticing, right? There's a lot of concentration stuff on the druid. All of these three that I like are concentration spells. Uh, but to test out, I'm going to be taking the Moonbeam and I think I'm going to be taking Spike Growth. Hold Person, awesome, but I'm, I want to try out these two. I've never used them before. Mr. Edwin Odesseron. We're going to get level 1 and level 2 spells and we are unlocking Meta Magic. So, for the Meta Magic option, options, we have a couple of them. Careful spell will make it so that allied creatures affected by the spell automatically succeed their saving throw. And this can be very good, I'm just not sure uh, how good it's going to be. Because if we're talking about magical damage, I'm just kind of reducing the damage they take. It doesn't make them immune. And for other spells that disable, I'm not sure if we're going to be... Casting something that disables both opponents and allies. So I don't think I'm going to be taking this one right now. Distance spell allows you to uh, cast spells in a longer range. Eh. Empowered spell, you reroll dice rolls of one or two. Also not particularly interesting, I don't think. It could be cool, but doesn't guarantee much. Doubling the duration of a spell. Kind of whatever. Heightened spell, this one I like a lot, can force a creature to roll the saving throw with disadvantage. This is very good. Quicken spell, this sounds very nice, but it actually isn't in my mind. Because you can cast a main action spell with a bonus action instead, although you cannot cast another spell during the same turn, except for cantrips. So if I can't be casting two spells in one turn, I don't think this is going to be very relevant. And finally, we have Twin Spell. If the Source Spell targets one creature only, this adds another target. This I like very much. 
So I'm actually going to take Heightened Spell and Twin Spell as our options and see what we get. Ah, another thing, by the way. Careful Spell, I hope, is not going to be as relevant here as it would be in, let's say, Baldur's Gate or Icewind Dale. Because since, it's, since this is turn-based, I have a lot more control of where the spells are actually going to land. So yeah, Heightened Spell and Twin Spell are my choices. As for the spells, I am actually going to unlearn one spell here because I want to take two level 2 spells. And I'm going to unlearn Thunder Wave, which I might regret. And I'm going to be taking Scorching Ray, because I love this spell. <laughs> and I am going to be taking Shatter. This one is just a nice AoE damage. It deals 3d8 damage in a 2 cell radius. So we're gonna go for this one. Uh, eventually, blindness is also pretty cool, and I might want to take it in the future. Darkness is also useful. Hold person, but this is something I can give my druid, I think. Um, but yeah, for now, I'm gonna go more damaging on Mr. Edwin Odesteron here, and see how it goes. Finally, red, a rogue. We're gonna select a roguish archetype. The new one, for those curious, is Hoodlum, uh, but it doesn't really suit the playstyle I like to have on my rogues. So this is kind of like a, a melee strength rogue, an armored up rogue. You gain proficiency in the intimidation skill, if you don't already have it, or expertise if you do. You gain proficiency with martial weapons, medium armor and shields, and you can now use sneak attack when using non-finesse melee weapons. At higher levels, when you hit an enemy with a sneak attack, they have disadvantage on attacks made against you until the start of your next turn. This actually sounds like a pretty solid class, and if I wanted to try and maximize my party, this is probably what I would take, but on a differently built character, because this would allow me for a second, um, a second frontliner. But for my preference, the one I like most is Dark Weaver. So this is the one we're going to take. It's the same thing we took in, um, in the original game. This gives us proficiency with the Poisonous Kit. Climbing no longer costs you extra movement and difficult climb surfaces are considered normal for us. And when hitting an enemy on lower ground with a ranged weapon, add your proficiency bonus to the damage. Pretty cool. At higher levels, when we hit with a melee weapon and deal at least one point of damage, our target must make a constitution save with a DC of 13 or they will be poisoned for one hour and take an additional 2d6 damage. This shouldn't be particularly relevant because I'm going to be sticking mostly to ranged weapons. But still, given the options, Dark Weaver is the one I like the most. Okay, and this will finish up our level ups. Everybody's well rested. We are going to proceed. Ah, there we go. Leave area. Uh, let me just make sure if there's nothing over here. Oh, there is. No, no, don't go up. I want the flowers. For crafting stuff. Angry bush. <laughs> no. Yes. Okay, I'm guessing we're going to go back to the camp. Uh, wait. Ah, we are over here. I want to go back to the merchant campsite. Right? I, I think so. <laughs> At least it was the only option we had. Okay, yeah, having the game on the SSD definitely improves the loading times, but it still takes a while. Okay, wait, apparently this is not the place where I wanted to go. So where am I supposed to go? 
Is there somewhere else for me to go? Ah, the valley. Okay, that's kind of weird. Apparently we cannot go back. Hmm. To the merchant campsite? Okay, let me just check something. Because sometimes when you open up the map um, while in the game, you have the option to fast travel to points you've been at previously. Because it seems kind of weird that we cannot... We can no longer go back to the, the camp where we started our adventure. If that's the case, that's the case. I have no problem with it. I just want to make sure. So, Valley Exit. Redeemer's Nest. <laughs> A whole lot of enemies. Ruin Entrance. Abandoned Camp. Okay, so we can come back over here. Never mind, we cannot. Okay, well, at least now we know. So, let's just get out of here. Except now my map is pointing the wrong way. Okay. Go over here. Okay, we're gonna leave and we are going to proceed to the valley area. It, it's apparently where we have our quest, the Merchant Rose. And it's a wooded outdoor area. Okay. We shall travel at, it's one long rest, wow, a one long rest, one long rest, <laughs> okay, let's take the, the slow path, oh really, apprentice necromancer, we can either ambush them or we can hide, let's ambush them. I like the combat in this game, and I, this can mean more experience and more items, so why not? Okay, so we have one guy over here, two guys over there. They appear to be melee skeletons. They are unlit. And there's a Dark Apprentice. Okay, and who's playing? Conan is playing. So I am going to want to put Conan right next to this guy. So we are going to dash over here. This will also make it so that this guy is threatened. And it means he's gonna take sneak attacks. Let's also rage here. Okay. Stone Resilience, we got 4 Temporary HP, yep, okay, end the turn, <clears throat> Edwin, uh, I would actually like to, I'm just gonna move my people over to this side, or I can put them up here, I'm gonna put them up here, come on little one, climb, climb, there you go. Okay, cast spell. Oh right, I have Misty Step, that's right. For my Draconic Bloodline, I think. And... Red, this time I didn't call her Patricia. She's gonna dash up here. And still be able to shoot this guy down here. Okay, so attack him. Pew. You have them now. Nice damage. In turn. And Tree Hugger, I'm just gonna bring him over here, I think. Over here is fine. Okay, so they are surprised because we ambushed them, which means that they will not be able to act. Uh, for this entire round. That's why I'm not afraid of just moving my people. <clears throat> okay, now Conan can go. We're gonna use a reckless attack. And smack this guy. Lovely. Wait, why is there no rage damage? It's 
kind of strange. Wait, I'm not raging? Oh, I'm not raging because I didn't take damage and I did not attack. God damn it. Uh, okay, then I'll just have to skip this. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay, let's end the turn. <laughs> well, that sucked. If I could shoot those guys over there, it would be better for me. Wait. Ah, I don't want uh, meta magic. I would like to shoot those guys with this, but I cannot. Let's just cast a cantrip here. No. Solasta, Evo, Malmis. Just when it hurts most. Okay. Here they come. Hopefully we can finish off this guy, but I don't think we're gonna have damage for it. Oh, come on. A two? You rolled a two, Red. That's... that's sad. <laughs> that's just sad. <laughs> Move over there. Okay, and turn. And now... I guess I'll move you over here. Do I want to smack him or do I want to do some damage here? I think I'll want to do some damage here. Oh god, this was a bad choice. Because I'm gonna be hitting my own people. Well, I guess I'm just gonna go into melee. If he decides to move away, we can have an attack of opportunity. There you go. Is he using a vampiric touch? <laughs> Bit you missed. Yeah, you shouldn't run away like that, my friend. <laughs> Ooh, yes, gather up, gather up for Mr. Edwin to have fun. Okay, so we are going to rage. We're gonna rest anyway, so I'm just gonna expend all of my spells here. Reckless attack and beat this guy up. You died like <laughs> Dead. Okay, let's move over here. Um, can I misty step? Okay, I don't care. I don't think I care about so the high grounds. So let's just move over there. Oh, oh! I forgot. I cannot use two spells in one turn. Yeah. Okay. Misty step counts as a spell, so, so kind of sad. Evil Malmis. Pew! Ooh, Ten damage. Nice. Oh, really? Do I have line of sight like this? I do. We have not had very nice rolls with red. Okay, so this guy is gonna attack. Uh, let's just do this. Natura Encho Malmis. Lovely. Roll the one. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so what kind of loot do we get from these friends? I guess I can take the swords. And these are daggers and <laughs> bone dice. Okay, now let me see something, uh, because there's something to say about these short swords and daggers on a rogue. And it's something like, uh, what's, what, how does this play? So, finesse weapon, finesse weapon, finesse weapon. 
If I do this, the weapon is not light, preventing the character from using a bonus attack with the offhand. Okay, this is what I wanted. So I'm gonna get an additional short sword, give it to red, and our main configuration is gonna be dual wielding short swords, because this will allow us for double attacks in a single round. Okay. And now all we have to do is go and rest to continue our travels to the valley. But yeah, I got I to gotta stay aware of the rage. Because if I don't attack or take damage, it's just going to cancel it. Yo, what's going on? Oh. They were resting before entering the valley. Oh, I like those houses. <laughs> in the previous game, or in the original campaign, uh, I had some issues with the waterfalls in terms of performance. So I might need to adjust some graphical settings. Let's see how it plays out. Oh, pretty area. Well, still no sign of civilization. I remember Galar saying, Oh, you're too green for the Badlands. Stop whining. <laughs> We're alive. Think we can still find this Marin being? I say if we can get out of here, we just forget him and go home. That's not a bad idea. Ooh, my lord. Yeah, okay. Wait, wait. This game is not very well optimized graphically. Um, so I'm playing Ultra. I'm not sure why. Let's go for Medium. Still not great. I think the shadows are really a big problem here. So sorry, but I have to do this. Um, let's lower the shadow quality. Man, I want to get a better computer, but... <laughs> the price of graphic cards... No bueno. What is this? It does not say. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm gonna have to do this. Yeah, the shadows are, are like a massive, massive difference. Maybe I can upgrade the quality a little bit if I'm playing without shadows. So maybe like very high, but no shadows. Okay, much better. Okay, so where am I going? New waypoint added, river camp. Look for Marin Ving. Are there footprints? Oh, we can cut this. Okay. I don't think we need to walk cautiously for now. There's a container over there. There's a dead body over here. How can I get there? Oh, I, I think I gotta go all the way around, right? I could also probably just misty step. Do you guys know a way to get there? Kneel now. Oh, this is a way through. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, so they they kind of magically know the way. Let let's not do that. Oh god, that's... <laughs> okay, I did not know that was a trap. Um, okay. I mean, it kind of looked like a trap, that's true, but... <laughs> I was not sure. Take the plant. Let's check out this container. A mirror and a tiger fang poison bolt. Nah, man, I want arrows. Give me arrows. 
And hopefully if we can move close to that cautiously, maybe red can disable it. I mean, can you? Ah, okay, we can. Uh, I, can I? Or do I just shoot the thing? <laughs> okay, so we just shoot the thing then. Okay, so let's get it up again. Track spotted. Javelins and crafting materials, I believe. Yeah, there are there are boot prints here. Scimitar and an unidentified potion. We can duck under this. Look, dive in more the tracks. dirt now. Yep, more tracks. Yeah, this is the rest spot and also the dead body. Rations. Ooh, a superb warhammer. Attack bonus, damage bonus, versatile. I think mine is still better in terms of damage. 2d6. But do I like the damage more or do I like the ability to hit more often? So 2d6 versus 1d10 plus 1. It's not much of a difference, so I'll go for this one, I think. Okay. And... Really? I cannot... Be one of Bing's escorts. Oh, okay. They just comment on it. Okay. I'm not really sure where I should be going. We came from here. We investigated all of this. Uh, but there was also a path. Yeah, we cut through this area. But this means going back all the way we came from. Crawling through dirt. Nothing new here. I can make a bridge. Let's go get the flower. And then we'll go the other way, I think. There's a house over there. Man, the foliage is pretty, but it does get in the way of the camera quite a bit. Oh, I had been here before. Okay, so going back to our original position. There's a bush. This one was not visible at all. Okay, and here we can make a bridge. Let's quick save. This will put us over there. Let's have Conan do this. So now everybody can pass through. <laughs> My druid is always falling down, Jesus Christ. Let's knock this down to make a bridge over there. And can I move over to this area? Ah, we can duck, okay. So before I go there, where does this lead? This leads me to the rest, and there's also a plant, but I need to go this way, I think, for it. Yeah. Okay. Dive in the dirt now. I'm diving, I'm diving. Chill. <laughs> okay, a lot of different ways we can go through. Uh... 
Can I get over there? Oh! Okay, you can. Nice jump. We have a bridge. Which should allow us to get the flowers here. And also... So, just Conan. Can, can you go over there? Yeah, he jump he jumps quite nicely. Nice. Okay, so break this down. Cut that down. This is where we were before. Get the flower. And this means we have searched all of the other area at this point. Why is this so up there? Okay. I really should also try the the fan-made dungeons from the dungeon maker. It's something that's been on my mind, but I haven't actually tried it yet. Okay. So this area has been covered. Yep. Now we go that way. Are there tracks? Oh. The Emerald Forest. Explore the ruins. Ooh. There's a couple of apes and the gorilla. Hmm. Okay, so you know what? I think we're gonna have this one go a little bit short of an episode. Because I think if I engage in combat here, the episode is going to go on very, very long. Uh, but at least we have some insight on our near future. Two big apes with 60 HP. They are apparently easy, but... not con Oh, three big apes. I'm not convinced about this. The gorillas were actually not very easy when we fought them out of the Redeemer Lair. Uh, but yeah, so, let's make our save, save number 3, quick save for good measure, and this is where we're going to end our episode. As always guys, thank you so much for being here in the channel with me, watching some Solasta with the Lost Valley DLC, as well as the, the Primal Calling DLC for the Barbarian and the Druid classes, and the Half Orc Heritage. If you guys have any questions or suggestions, leave a comment below. If you want to get notified about other videos coming to the channel, feel free to subscribe. It's a free and easy way to support my channel and videos are coming out every single day. And I hope to see you all in the next episode. Until then, stay safe everyone.